So today on the program, really pleased to feature the North Quincy High School Air Force Junior ROTC team who will be competing in the National Academic Bowl Championship in Washington, D.C., coming up uh, in June 23rd through the 27th in our nation's capital. So today we want to welcome uh, to the program three members of that team, along with their instructor, John D. Lorenzo, Master Sergeant, U.S. Air Force, retired. So welcome to all of you. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having us. Great to see you. It's quite an accomplishment, uh, John, for, for this team to make it this far. First of all, if you could just give us a little uh, background about the uh, junior ROTC program at North Quincy High School. Uh, well, it's the uh, we're in the 39th year uh, here in uh, at North Quincy. And they did have another another over at uh, actually for Quincy itself. It's probably been in since 1973, the ROTC program. So it's a strong program. Uh, these kids really is what makes the program. Their leadership, their dedication, their commitment to the city, to the school uh, is uh, is really a big part of that. And it, in, in developing their leadership as they turn from a freshman to a sophomore, work their way up being a senior and taking the lead. Um, the whole thing behind the ROTC program is really having, having the cadets have that ownership and teaching them to manage their time as, as well as managing at the low, low cadets time of getting things accomplished. And that includes anything from their academics uh, to their school involvements and to this and to their community service. So now uh, is the RTC program open to all students at North Quincy High? Yes. Uh, anybody can apply. That doesn't mean they'll stay, but they can apply to be there because there are standards that we follow through the federal government rules and regulations. So, um, but anybody can apply. Um, and for the most part, uh, like I say, right now we're maxed. We have 180 students um, and uh, it's, it's been going strong. And that's only because of the cadets. And do they typically stay for all four years of their high school career? Believe it or not, yes. Mo like this year, for instance, is 52 seniors graduating. Uh, next year is allowable because of the COVID. But the years after that, it bounces right back up to those numbers, you know, mid 40s to low 50s on graduation day. And so what is the uh, curriculum? You know, what is their their uh, commitment to the program uh, each day at North Quincy High? Well, typical day in ROTC for class wise, they have I have typical five academic classes which is the leadership portion, which is leveled at their AS level, which is aeroscience. So you have aeroscience one, two, three, and four for freshmen, sophomores, juniors, seniors. Also, they have uh, aeroscience, uh, aviation history, you know, world studies. Uh, so those are our core curriculum. Uh, but on top of that, they have things like the JLab or the Stella program or drill or color guard or our rated challenge team, uh, drill teams. Um, they also do a curriculum in action at the end of the year. We go on a trip uh, and everybody can apply. Usually bring two buses, usually around 100. This year, again, getting back with COVID, we're trying to get back on track there. We also do a kickoff at the beginning of the year, which is a uh, encampment. It's a leadership encampment down at the Cape, which is really the start of the year of what we want. It's, a, it's that model uh, that we want to implement for the full school year. And the again, it's the first real time that the new seniors have a chance to take that leadership role. Uh, but on a typical day in the morning, we have students here between 6 and 6.30 every day. And that starts in September. And uh, I would say they're here pretty much every single day. And after school, normally uh, they're here till probably anywhere between 4.30 and 5.30 uh, working on other things. So it's a long day. And, and uh, May is a very one of our really busy months. So, for instance, this weekend where we have a rated challenge up in Peabody, uh, I'm bringing 24 people up there. And then we also have uh, the, we're doing the, uh, um, what school is that? Montclair. Montclair. We're going to Montclair. And I got about, I don't know, maybe 80 kids going over there uh, to help with their festival. We have another color guide helping the veterans, uh, one of the street dedications. And we have another color guide on Sunday. So they're, they're pretty busy. Yeah, I know they're highly visible across the city at all of these uh, events, um, you know, community organizations, uh, volunteer events that you mentioned, and more probably the folks don't even hear about. Is that part of uh, their duties or is that in addition to? That's, a, that's really in addition to things that they want to be involved in. Uh, the leadership development before and after school, those are the things that we say they can, anybody can go up to. So we can have anybody on the drill team, anybody on our 
uh, which drill team consists of like there's 11 different things that they can do. They can do a color guard. They can do an X, what they call X teams, flipping rifles. Uh, they can do the regulation teams, the inspection teams. So there's a plenty there for the kids to do. We have a new cadet team. But then we have the J Lab, which is all academic. And we can have as many teams as we want, but normally two. But we can, you know, usually you can have groups of, you know, 10 or 12 kids in the same room going over questions. But the, the core team is the one that will compete. Uh, and they will compete, uh, again, because they were in the top 10 this year. Uh, they're very fortunate, uh, not fortunate. They worked hard. They're smart. Uh, they're smart. They're smart kids. And so to be in the top 10 out of like 900 uh, Air Force uh, ROTC program is pretty good. And um, so they're going down with the other nine schools, uh, Air Force. Uh, they'll compete with them. If they if they beat those another, uh, nine schools, they will compete with all the other branches. So we have the Army down there, the, uh, the, the Navy's going to be down there, Marines going to be down there. So we're going to be competing with all those. So there'll be a lot of kids down there in D.C. Yeah, this is going to be on the campus of the Catholic University of America, June 23rd through the 27th, uh, sponsored by the U.S. Air Force Junior ROTC, conducted by College Options Foundation. It's a nonprofit organization, I guess, that, that puts this together. Correct. Okay. Um, now, interestingly, this team from North Quincy is one of only 16, is that right, um, uh, teams in the nation to advance to the finals? Actually, there's only 10 this year. 10? 10. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, that's some pretty- For the Air Force. Team. For the Air Force. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But then the, the Army, they're much, they have a lot more schools, so they have a lot more um, people that will be competing within their service. But okay. again, it'll be it'll be only one team will advance to the, to the actual final. So hopefully they'll do well and they'll advance. Yeah, there, there are three members uh, from the team uh, represented today. How much? How many members in the team as a whole? Normally there are six on the team. You have four primary and two alternates. Okay. Okay. Uh, so today we have uh, with us, and I'm going to get the names right. Uh, Jason Lynn. Iseen Liang and Ethan Liu. So welcome to all of you and uh, really appreciate the opportunity to talk to you and learn a little bit more about uh, yourselves and about uh, this competition. Iseen, I'd, I'd like to start with you, um, if that's okay. And first, tell me a little bit about uh, how you got involved with the ROTC program. Um, I am currently a junior and in AS3. So I've been in this program for the past three years, since my freshman year. I first heard about the ROTC program from an upperclassman, and I saw it as an opportunity for self-improvement. I joined with the intention of developing leadership and along with my other soft skills. But as the saying goes, I came looking for copper and found gold. Over the years, I formed bonds that are invaluable and memories that are irreplaceable. So has it been what you thought it would be, uh, or has it been different? Part of it, yes. But... I've learned so much more and um, there was a lot, many aspects of the program that I did not expect that are extremely positive and I've had a great experience so far. What would you say have been some of uh, the more uh, memorable uh, moments during ROTC? Um, Sarge talked a little bit about earlier. Um, the encampment is one of my favorite experiences. Um, it's similar to an intense military boot camp um, in which flights have to work together to compete against other flights. You're put together with cadets that you may have never interacted with before, which gives you new opportunities to get to know them and grow alongside with them. The friendly competition ropes off onto everyone and the motivation to take the Outstanding Flight Award by the end of the encampment um, makes the experience truly unforgettable. So you still have a year left in the program, is that right? Yep. And do you have future plans after uh, North Quincy High right now? Um, although I don't plan to head into the Air Force, um, I plan to attend a four-year college and continue seeking higher education. But a lot of the skills that I've developed through this program already will be massive help to me in the future as a person and as a student. What uh, areas of study uh, would you like to pursue in the future? I'm thinking in the science field, uh, somewhere along biology, chemistry, pharmacology. And for folks uh, just coming in as freshmen, I seen uh, and considering maybe joining ROTC, what would your advice be to them? 
Uh, my advice, my number one advice would be to get involved. There are so many opportunities available that we present to them in the ROTC program. And the best way to learn and grow as a cadet, as a person, as a student, and wherever you may go in the future <laughs> oh. <laughs> is to take advantage of the opportunities that are offered to you. And these opportunities are truly um, invaluable. They offer you experiences and just skills that you can take away from in the future. And one of those skills is not flinching when the lights go out, right? <laughs> <laughs> per persevering no matter what the situation. Correct. <laughs> Good job with keeping your composure on that. <laughs> Lights and bells. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Uh, Jason, let's bring you in and talk a little bit about um, yourself and your background and how you got involved with ROTC. Uh, so... Like I seen said, I was also introduced to the idea of it by an upperclassman that we met while we were uh, doing a middle school event where uh, where high schoolers would come in and help. But like a lot of what convinced me to join in the first place is that I wasn't really sure about what elective I wanted to take. And a lot of my friends wanted to take this. So I decided to give it a shot. And although many of my friends, like they, they decided that RTC wasn't for them, they left. But for me, I think that it was a good choice. It really helped me learn more about myself and develop skills that I wouldn't have otherwise. Are you also a junior? Yeah. Okay. And has the experience been what you thought it would be? Uh, I mean, I knew it was a leadership program. So, of course, like, we would have to be involved. We would have to take charge. But I didn't expect it to be the extent to which, like, uh, to the extent that I see like cadets, especially seniors, they have a major role in ensuring that the core runs successfully and properly. And every single day, you can see examples of it, like when flight commanders or element leaders, they help underclassmen, like whether if it's with drill, studying the cadet guy, or just anything in general, to be honest. So what have been some of your most memorable experiences so far? Uh, well, one of mine was encampment, but I've seen already covered it. So uh, I, I think I'll just, the second will probably be spring trip. It, uh, it's like uh, when Sarge said, a lot of us get on a bus, go on a trip somewhere. Maybe we visit historical sites, amusement parks, things like that. It's just like, it's an opportunity for us to get to know people that we wouldn't have otherwise because, well, it's a hundred people and we're stuck with each other for five days. So I mean, there's no, there's nothing better to do than, you know, make some new friends, get to know other people. Well, like I seen said too, some of the soft skills I think you probably develop, and, and John, you probably agree. Uh, communication, um, you know, team building, um, acceptance uh, of others' uh, quirks, if you will, right? Oh, absolutely. From uh, day one, you see some of the freshmen. They uh, one of the things we do every year is they have to do a report in a presentation or a briefing, if you want to call it briefing, and you. I, we always get feedback from all the other teachers. They know when there's an ROTC given a presentation because they've already practiced and pres presented what they were, you know, going to present. So, um, yeah, there's a lot we do that a lot of people don't realize, and it's uh, it's all beneficial for them. Absolutely, yeah. So, Ethan, your turn uh, to tell us your story about uh, your involvement in, in ROTC. All right. So, I'm a freshman, and I'm in uh, my first year at ROTC. I first heard of ROTC by um, an upperclassman as well. They recommended me um, the program saying that it's quite an unforgettable experience and that I would learn a whole lot um, just being in the program. Like they said, I've learned a whole bunch of new skills. Uh, for example, I used to be one of those people who didn't exactly talk that much, but after my few months of ROTC, I've learned to communicate a whole lot more and express myself a lot more clearly. Yeah, uh, I can see that already uh, just doing this uh, remote uh, television interview. So that's probably something you would not have done prior to joining this. Is that right? Yeah. Sure. So, I mean, you're just coming into it now and in hearing from your upper upperclassmen, uh, does it uh, encourage you to continue? It does indeed encourage me to continue. I do plan on staying for all four years of my high school year, uh, career. And what are some of your favorite experiences so far? Obviously, it's still new, but uh, but so far, what would you say are some of your favorites? 
so far, like Jason and I seen said, it would be encampment because that's where I first met um a lot of the people that I'm quite close with in ROTC. And at the same time, it taught me a whole lot about what ROTC does, maybe what we had to learn. And it did actually teach me to be a whole lot more responsible. <laughs> So it's interesting, John, you know, the common theme I've heard is that it's kind of um, it's like a, like a built in group of friends too. Uh, you know, outside of Ratsy. Is that right? Oh, the bonds are in- incredible. Uh, we just yeah. had our 39th annual awards banquet and the alumni, they always are coming back and, you know, class of 2010 was one of the originals that they actually sent scholarship money to these kids on, on graduation. And now we have got, class of 2019, 2014, 2016. I just had a lieutenant colonel who graduated from the program. He's down in Washington, D.C. He just sent us a check for $500, and he's from class of 2000. Wow. Um, so, yeah, there's a, there's a lot of bonding and a lot of connection. Um, I think one of the, the main things that the younger cadets see and feel, and it's something that I I kind of push on the seniors, but I, and I expect uh, that – you know, you're no better than that person that oh, that you're overseeing and you have to earn their respect. And they do it by help tutoring each other. You know, they support each other in every way. So we always have open open policies that come in to help them out. You know, even the thing about the uniforms, like they, they're making changes out there. And early in the year, I asked them, if you didn't have to wear the chose not to wear the uniform, would you? And I was really shocked because some schools in parts of the countries you know, it's hard to get people in uniforms. They don't, they, no, no, we want to be in the uniform. We, we are, we're an organization. We are, we're, we're a family. We're, you know, we're committed to this program, leadership program. We want people to know who we are. And that's a distinction. And like I tell them, it's like being a cheerleader or a football uh, player, you know, you wear your uniform with pride when, on that day, right? So they do the same thing. And when they're in the community, the same thing, you wear that uniform for pride and not just pride for themselves, but pride in their nation. And, and for the people that are out there in the community doing good things. So that's a good thing. Yeah. Um, in terms of um, breakdown between um, uh, uh, males and females, John, would you say it's, it's what were the ratio would you say? Uh, it used to be more male than female, but now it's more female than male. Interesting. Really? Yeah. We, and in fact, we have a, uh, a uh, second lieutenant um, coming to visit. And uh, her brothers were in the court and she wasn't. But when she went to college, she did ROTC and then she joined the Air Force and her brothers didn't. Oh, interesting. OK. But, yeah, it's kind of it's kind of interesting to see that. But yeah. these, these kids that we have here, really, they strive on each other. They're just they're focused. And that's what yeah. we get focused and feel good about who they are as individuals. Yeah. Don't worry about what other people are saying, because if they're talking about you, it's got to be good. Right. If they're talking about you, it's got to be good. As long as you're doing everything right, it's got to be good. That's how I look at it. Well, I mean, Ethan said it. Uh, I really brought him out of his out of his shell, and I'm sure that you know um, similar stories for Jason and Nicene as well when they first started. Yeah, I can't help but notice that um, uh, Nicene and Jason are both uh, decorated. I can't tell what the what the medals are for, uh, and I know uh, Ethan. I'm sure you'll be striving to get those as well. But maybe you could talk a little bit about those commendations. Oh, uh, I'll go first. So these awards and are accumulative awards over the years that we've earned. And um, some are local awards in which our, in which our school uh, set the criteria for what needs, what are the requirements to earn them. And they're generally easier to earn. And the higher ranking ribbons, um, I'm sure you can't see them, but um, they are national awards and they are presented to only a few cadets in the Corps. And it really shows who um, who step up to the plate more, most often, who really puts themselves out there to take leadership positions, to lead, to communicate and to work with other people. Um, and these awards are kind of, are what cadets take pride in. and. They motivate us to get these awards, um, to be the better version of ourselves always, and to strive to motivate others and motivate ourselves on a daily basis. Yeah. How about yourself, Jason? Uh, well, she basically covered like 
why we get them, how we get them. But so, so I, guess, I guess I'll just go over like what some of them are for. Like we Please, have, yeah. we have ribbons for like academic achievement, participation in drill teams. And then there's further ribbons for uh, successfully placing at a drill competition. And then there's also other ones that are like direct incentives to, um, to like follow the standards of the core, like mm -hmm. the good conduct ribbon, which is given to cadets in good standing or longevity, um, dress and appearance, health and wellness. Okay. Basically, like, a lot of it is, is uh, what she said is to like give us an incentive to like keep ourselves motivated. And, yeah. Yeah. And uh, Ethan, see, seeing those uh, of the upperclassmen, does that motivate you? Well, it does motivate me to follow, well, like he, uh, both of them said, their standards that everyone has. And it does motivate me to shoot higher since some of these ribbons have, we'll say, ranks where if um you score at this percentile, you'll get maybe a bronze star, a higher percentile, a silver. It motivates me to shoot for higher and just improve myself. Yeah, there is a, a, a just to add on that, for instance, yeah, academic, it's a very academically strong. So this year we had 30 cadets that received an, ac an additional academic ribbon with a gold star. That means they had a 4.5 grade point average or higher. Wow. We, had, we had 62 that got the silver star. That's a, the 4.0 or higher. And then we had another 48 that had a 3.3 .3 or higher. Um, and so, uh, you know, which is really, if you add those numbers together, we're getting pretty close to everybody in the core. So they, they feed off each other. One of the ones I tell them is the most important one and it's low on the scale is the attendance ribbon. I tell them that all the time. I says, don't ever come to me and ask me for a letter of recommendation. If you're late all the time or, or you're tardy, I says, cause I will not write it. Cause that's my word that I'm telling the, these people that you're a good person. Um, so attendance to me, even though it's low, it, it really says something about a person's character. Well, what's the saying? 50% of life is showing up. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So, no, they strive and they earn every single one of them. I've had kids with the academic size. I got a 3.9998. Okay. You, next time you'll get the 4.0 and we'll give you the silver star. <laughs> so, <laughs> how that good. works. Yeah. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about the, uh, this is 2023 U.S. Air Force Junior ROTC Academic Bowl Championship, again, on the campus of uh, the Catholic University of America in our nation's capital, uh, June 23rd through the 27th. Uh, what is actually going to be happening during during this competition? Well, they're going to go down and they'll get a, when we get there on the 23rd, they're going to, you know, greet us, bring us into the dorms, you know, and then that evening they're going to be able to go down and practice and feel comfortable about the area where they'll be competing. Uh, just like uh, the academic bowl that they did here, basically that's what they'll be doing. They'll be going one-on-one. -on -one. I don't know the criteria yet of where, how would they're going to rank that, um, okay. you know, they, I don't know if they're going to pick, you know, schools out of a hat and you're going to compete with this school or that school, but uh and I think it's like around Robin, you, you know, you go a couple of times and then you go from there. Okay. Um, and we're, we're working on this, but our, our captain, I seen Liang uh, with the J lab. She's not going to be able to come down with us this year oh. uh, because she's going to a pilot program and she's going to learn how to fly uh, this summer. Uh, so she leaves June 11th. 11th and doesn't come back to like August 5th. So she got a full ride scholarship to get her pilot's license, her private pilot's license uh, this uh, this summer. That is amazing. I see. Congratulations and best of luck with that. That's incredible. Thank you. But we still have a good, strong team, and hopefully they're going to do us proud. So I am. I am. I am sure. Yes. I'm sure. Yeah. Um, but to get to this point, I, I, you know, I do want to mention, um, I mean, they've already had some pretty stiff competition uh, in a core curriculum, such as math, science, language, arts, current events, citizenship, leadership skills, uh, financial literacy, uh, but also values. Right, John? Values like citizenship, academic competition, uh, college opportunity. Yes. So is it, a, is it like a high school quiz show type format? Is that how this is going? Yes, it is pretty much like that. Okay. It's like a quiz like a quiz show. But again, they're competing the best of the best of the Air Force ROTC. And then hopefully it'll be the best of the best of the branches and which branch comes on top. So uh, so the first, uh, so that Friday they're going, they're going to start right out. And I think Sunday will be the, the finals, I think, right? I think it's Sunday where they'll be 
the top teams from every uh, our junior ROTC brands going against each other. Okay. So I seen, uh, you know, you're not going to be there. So what is going to be your uh, advice to your team uh, that they can take with them? Well, I think they already know what to expect. We've gone over it countless times during our meetings, during our practices. And I think I trained them to be pretty, <laughs> pretty good. Uh, I'm sure they'll be fine. Um, even though uh, I assume the title of team team captain, we wouldn't have made it here without everyone's contribution, hard work, dedication, and commitment. And some of them just needs to go a little bit out of their shell to take a little bit more leadership, um, which I've been assuming for these co past couple of months. But we still, we luckily have a month left. And uh, from pretty much now on, I'm going to be stepping back and letting them assume more leadership position on taking lead of the team, um, having their own practices. And I'm sure by the time the competition they reaches us, they'll be more than ready. And I already see that they have a lot of potential and they got it. A sign of, of a true leader right there, John, right, is, is somebody who knows uh, how to create uh, somebody in their in their path. She's one of the new top five. Yeah. So she's I, one of the top five commanders for next year. I, I don't doubt it, and I can see why. So, Jason, is that pressure on you now? <laughs> um, I mean, they seem to expect it to be. Uh, I can't say I'm happy with it, but like, I mean, I'm pretty sure I have to, so, you know. But, uh, but you'll rise to the challenge, right? I hope so. I'm sure. Yeah. Well, I think you'd probably be motivated to help folks uh, like Ethan, who are just starting out, right? And feel that sense of responsibility and duty. I mean, yeah, like that's a, that's a lot of what our job is. Like what she said about having us fill leadership positions, like uh, on a bigger scale, it's usually uh, how all the seniors pass on their knowledge to the upcoming seniors about how to be an officer, how to manage a flight. And then it's also from the element leaders, which are juniors, to the underclassmen, telling them, like, uh, you guys are going to be an element leader, so this is how you're going to take care of your element next year. And at the same time, they're being taught by the seniors on how to run a flight or maybe a squadron or maybe top five next year. It's just like, it's all a chain, like from the top to the uh, to the bottom. It's just, uh, it's like, we, we try to pass our skills and responsibilities to each other. It's called a team, right? Yeah. So, uh, Ethan, do you feel, um, you know, comfortable uh, to be able to ask if you have questions or concerns? I definitely do feel quite comfortable asking if I have a question or a concern. All of the upperclassmen, uh, anyone in ROTC, basically, I can go to them and ask for help without any problem because they are very welcoming and will gladly help me when I need it. Yeah. It's great to hear. John, you've built an incredible uh, program and uh, you have a, a wonderful team here. Well, uh, we appreciate that. But again, um, they come back because they want to come back. It's, you know, um, I, I think that, like you say, building that foundation uh, and believing in each other and, and, and pushing each other a little bit to be more successful is, is a key. But that these two new juniors coming next year, Again, they're going to be that role model. And uh, one of the sayings we always say is you got to lead by example. Nobody will do anything if the seniors aren't doing it. So you're the forefront. You need to be out there. And uh, that's it. That's what they get graded on is that leadership role that they're they're performing during the year. Yeah. So what does winning the competition mean? Is there a is there a trophy? Is there a prize? Is it bragging rights? You know, what do you get? Oh, definitely bragging rights. I don't know about that. It'll be definitely bragging rights. So uh, uh, we've gone maybe we've had the opportunity uh, since I've been here, maybe three times or four times. And COVID kind of hindered it a little bit. Um, but they're just they're just super smart kids. And I believe that they do win this some um, scholarship money involved. Oh. How much? I'm not sure. But um, if not, they'll get a coin and a T-shirt. Yes. Right. <laughs> <laughs> anything else uh anybody would like to add right now no they just we have to get together and figure out what they want to do on the free time down there so they have these things us to go to the mall dc mall there's a little bit of free time a couple of days and um they'll we'll be looking at that in the next couple of days and see what you know what museums they may want to go to and we'll go from there 
It is an incredible city to visit, and there is plenty to do, too. So I'm sure um, it'll be uh, fun and educational. I'm kind of envious, actually, because I'd love to get back to D.C. in the near future. So I want to congratulate all of you uh, making it this far, and I wish you the very best uh, in your future endeavors. Really appreciate the opportunity to talk to you, and hopefully we've let the community know a little bit more about the, the ROTC program and about uh, yourselves as individuals. Oh, oh, Joe, thank you very much for taking your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're very welcome. And thank you all for watching us here at AEM Quincy. I'm Joe Catalano. We will see you next time. Hi, yeah, Mom. Hi, Mom. Hi, Mom. Hi, Mom. <laughs> <laughs>